Okay, so I'm using my phone audio because there's cicadas out here and they're so, so loud. So hopefully this audio works. But I picked up Fable again. I started it back in May and I just never finished it. I put a bookmark in it and I never thought about it again. And I just hate that, but I also really wanted to finish it. So here's the thing. Fable. She, her mom died in a storm. Her dad, who is a traitor, left her on an island of thieves for four years and told her to basically just survive. And so her whole goal is to get off the island, go find her dad, and be part of his crew. Well, she meets West, who's the male lead, and he's also a traitor and is helping her get across the sea to see her father. And you are meeting his crew and everybody. So it's it's got a fun dynamic. Like, I like all the characters for the most part. I'm not a huge fan of the male lead. He's pretty flat for me. But the thing is, is everything is really just laid out from the beginning. It's like, all right, here's her goal. And this is what we're doing. It kind of feels like a Studio Ghibli film where it's just like you're along for the adventure. There's no... There's no character development. I really enjoy the side characters. And I do love Fable. I think she's really fun. There's some amazing descriptions of her mother in here that I'm absolutely loving. And those snippets are great. The writing is easy. It's fast paced. It's fun. And there's really good descriptions. I just feel like there's something that's lacking. I don't know what it is exactly. I feel like I'm really big on character development. I really wish I liked the male lead more. And I wish there were more scenes with her father. We haven't gotten a lot yet. But I'm excited to see how it all pans out. Oh, I'm sweating, so I'm going to go now. We'll continue to read it and see how it goes. But those are my current, current thoughts. So I finished Fable and my final thoughts are I overall enjoyed it. I really liked them out in the open water, the whole ship, all the crew, all that was super duper fun. And I just loved the descriptions of everything. If you're looking for a pirate book and you don't know where to start, I would start with Fable and then I would check out Trust of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. That one is also a great pirate book, very different dynamic. I personally like Trust of the Emerald Sea more, but I thought this was a fun adventure. What I wish we had more of, I wish we had more scenes with her dad. I get it. She's trying to get to him and then we eventually get there. And I just wish there was more with him. He's so mysterious and I think that's the point of his character, but I just wish that we had more of him. I think you can still have more scenes with the character and still make them mysterious. So I just felt like it was too little of him. There's some childhood snippets in here, some snippets of her mother. And I love the snippets of her mother. Those are so, so fun. I wish there was more from her child. Childhood. There was a few flashbacks, but not enough for me to get a grip on everything. And so that was just, I felt like lacking. I feel like if you have more backstory, I can care about the characters a little more. And that just wasn't in here. And then the male lead, my main issue with him is that he's just not that nice most of the time. We only have one or two scenes where he's actually being nice. He made my heart flutter once, but only once. And I was like, bro, wh what is going on here? Like, you're one way throughout the entire book and then we have this cute heart flutter scene and then you just continue to not really be that great. I don't know. I feel like he was lacking in a lot of ways. He just fell flat. I didn't feel like I knew enough about him. We get like one scene where he's talking about his past and things that have happened to him, but that's it. We get a few paragraphs and that's it. That's all you get. And I was like, I can't care about you if I don't know anything about you. I will say I am excited for book two, even though this wasn't my favorite book I've read this year. I still enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun adventure. So if you like fun, easygoing adventures that aren't too high stakes and you're looking for a pirate read, then I think you should check this one out. I ended up giving it three stars just because of all that stuff. So three stars, still a good rating. I still enjoyed it and I am excited to read the next book. It's actually a duology and then there are two other books, I believe, but those have other people's stories. I think one is her father's story and then another one is somebody else that's totally unrelated to these people in this book. But either way, I'm excited for book two. So stay tuned for whenever I read that book. I do love Fable in this. She is her own woman and I really really just enjoyed how much she doesn't listen to other people like she doesn't listen to West the male lead she doesn't listen to Saint her dad she does her own thing but it's not in an annoying way it's her being like hey I know who I am and what I'm doing and I'm gonna I'm gonna go do it so I appreciated her and without further ado let's get into our next book <laughs> Thank you. 
so I read Nora Goes Off Script yesterday. I read it in a day, which is absolutely crazy, but it's only 257 pages, so it goes by pretty fast. So this book is about Nora. She's in her 40s. She has two kids. She's divorced, and she writes screenplays. Well, she writes a screenplay about her divorce to her ex-husband. Anyway, so Hollywood sends their people to her property, and they film the movie at her property. After the movie is done being filmed, the main actor of the movie stays at her place for a couple weeks because he just has some stuff going on and he wants to process it and be out in nature and he loves her property so it's about them falling in love for me what didn't work well in this was up to page 140 you have them being together they're being cutesy he's going to the grocery store with her they're watching the sunrise on her porch they're doing just very basic things but he hasn't done those things in a while and so it's cute and it's fun and romantic because he's doing day-to-day -day life with her and he's doing things with her kids he's helping her son with a play at school and he's hanging out with her daughter and she is on guard a bit she's like hope my kids know that he's gonna leave in a couple of weeks and that because he's an actor he can't stay but meanwhile she's falling in love with him and she's like thinking hopefully this could work but i don't know maybe it won't the problem i had with nora and leo the male lead is that they don't really communicate things well with each other up to page 140 is their romance and then from page 140 to page 244 so 104 pages worth they have a misunderstanding and for me in most books where you have like the third act breakup i don't mind it if it's just like a chapter or two like 20 pages max but 104 pages of a misunderstanding is just too big it's too big it's too much for me if they just communicated with each other and called each other it would have been resolved and the fact that they are both 40 year old something people and they don't know how to pick up their phones and call each other and communicate something that is so simple just bothered me i think most people could probably look past it i just am super big on communicating to people i think my main problem is the way it's miscommunicated and then the way it's dealt with in the end i think that was my major thing there is a scene where they're in the backyard they string up lights it's magical and beautiful but we don't get a whole lot of those super romantic scenes and those are scenes that i just really wish were in here instead of all the day-to-day -day stuff i do understand like people got to get their groceries and stuff and i think that's great i just wish there was a little bit more cutesy romance stuff that makes your heart flutter you know what i mean so because of those things i'm gonna give this book two stars i understand how people like it and enjoy it i did enjoy parts and snippets of it but it as a whole i felt like didn't flow together super well so if you don't like miscommunication for more than 20 pages then this probably is not the book for you but if you don't mind miscommunication if you like books with kids i will say the kids are written really well in this book usually i don't like books with kids because they're just written in such an annoying way but these kids are really fun and sweet and loving and i just really appreciate her writing them so well so without further ado let's get into our next book It is another day, another sunset, and we have a different book. So I decided to film outside because the weather is so nice in the evening. It is still humid, but it's actually like pretty decent. I am going to start reading Swift and Saddled next. I read Done and Dusted a couple months ago, and I really enjoyed it. It is a cowboy romance series. She's doing another book that's coming out in November, I believe, and I'm so excited for that one. So Done and Dusted is about Emmy falling in love with her brother's best friend Brooks but then this one is about her other brother named Wes and it's about him falling in love with a woman named Ida she's from the big city she's an interior designer and he hires her to design a property on their ranch because I think he wants it to be like a bed and breakfast place and so it's about them falling in love and she does not want to have anything to do with love because she's been through a really bad marriage and she just doesn't want a repeat of that and she has her guard up and it's about Wes just being a total sweetheart the one thing that i just absolutely love about these books is the family in it it's just so much of a heartfelt family in it emmy's dad is so fun and then you've got the horses and the ranch and it's all just 
so fun like it's got good vibes throughout and you just can't help but love all the side characters and so i'm excited for wes's story because he's like the sweet smiley brother golden retriever i think whereas gus is more frowny and serious so i am excited for the other romance coming out in november but i'm really excited to read this one and just come back to a familiar story where we have some of the same characters if not all the same characters from the first book but now we have ida being involved and just seeing all of them interact with her and the love story i think it's just gonna be super duper fun so i'm gonna get to reading and then i will let you know my thoughts but i'm i'm already excited like i feel like this one's gonna be really good so i will let you know my thoughts once i've read a bit more I'm so obsessed with this spot and the lighting and everything that I just want to keep filming here despite how incredibly humid it has become but it is another day it's another sunset and I have in fact finished Swift and Saddle okay overall I really love the cowboy vibes the small town the characters all the side characters are great all the girl characters are great I love watching Ida I believe that's how you say her name in this book I love watching her just interact with all the other girls from the first book Wes is the love interest in this book and so it's about him just going after Ida she's got her guard up she's had a bad divorce before but we don't really ever get details on that we just know hey it didn't go great she felt trapped and that's why she's so guarded i wish there was more detail and depth about what exactly happened in her marriage same with wes we are told that he has depression and he has medicine for it but it's only brought up a about i think two or three times you don't really dive into that very much and i just wish there was a little bit more there i will say this book has a lot of spice which i am just not a fan of i feel like it takes me out of the story i prefer closed door romance over yeah in the room with them i will say i feel like this book would have been so much better if she took out all the unnecessary spice in my opinion i think it's unnecessary but i think if she took out all the spice and instead had the characters getting to know each other better in those scenes it would have been such a better book it would have felt like the characters had more depth to them this book really just felt like Wes was pining over Ida just wanted to get to know her she's putting her guard up like the whole time and then when she finally I mean you can you can tell by the cover once she finally like gives in to him she still has these doubts and she still has all these insecurities and I just wish that they had more conversations going on between them just explaining things to each other better having better communication when they did talk I really enjoyed it and I was like like, okay, that was awesome, but you only scratched the surface. You didn't go any deeper with anything, and that just got to me. So this book is like a 2.5 star for me, honestly. So overall, I would say if you like cowboy romances, small town, feel-good books that are just pretty lighthearted, then I think you'll enjoy it. Just know, hey, the spice meter is up there. Anyway, so that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching me mood read. This was so fun. I love mood reading. I just love reading general so i hope to see you next time i have a lot of videos planned i'm so sorry i haven't been doing reading videos lately it's because it takes a long time for me to read sometimes i get into book slumps or i'm working a lot so so anyway thanks for watching thanks for coming with me on this adventure and i will uh see you next time okay bye